What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. We've all heard the phrase before, if you want to get big, you got to lift big. Today, I'm going to show you how getting a little bit weaker is going to allow you to get big, or at least feeling as if you're getting weaker is going to allow you to get big. When it comes to training shoulders specifically, we're talking about getting bigger shoulders, you want to know how to lift both heavy weights and light weights. And the light weights are going to require that you leave your ego at the door. But I ensure you this, if you do what I show you here today, you're going to get bigger shoulders. Let's start here with the big lift. Let's say it's a push press. Why does this concept work? Because on a push press, if I'm going to do this exercise, it is not just my shoulders. I got a jammer here. You could be doing it with a push press or the bar. If I'm going to get my, my, this, this implement up over my head, then I'm going to need much more than my shoulders. I need my shoulders to contribute. I need my triceps to contribute. I need a little bit of my upper chest to contribute. I need my core. I even need my legs. So if I'm going to move this sucker, you can see there's a lot going on to get up there. So can I increase my strength on this exercise and therefore get my shoulders to get bigger over time? Of course but it requires a lot of step-by-step -step small progressions to be able to improve my strength here. On the contrary, if I were to check my damn ego at the door and go grab some dumbbells and do something that is going to more effectively isolate the shoulders, I can actually increase my shoulder strength. Now, I said more effectively isolate my shoulders. That doesn't mean going and grabbing the heavy dumbbells and doing side lateral raises where I start bringing my traps into it, bringing my arms into it, bringing my back and momentum into it, what we want to do is go to a zero momentum exercise. So I'm going to come all the way down here to 15s for a side lateral raise. Now, how do we do it? It's so important. Listen to the details here. As I go to raise these dumbbells up, I'm not, the first move is not this. The first move is not this. It's not this with the bending of the arm. If I keep my arm straight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my arm out to the side by initiating the contraction from here to here, right in the delt. You can see the delt from here to here. I'm going to just initiate the contraction like that. Okay? Now, to ensure we have zero momentum, stop halfway. You're going to have fun with this. Take whatever weight you normally do this exercise with and then cut it in half and then see how many reps you can do. You're going to instantly see you'll feel weaker, but you're going to get stronger. If I go halfway up right here and I stop, the contraction is right now in the side delt, as much as I possibly can make it. Now I got to initiate from there. This is the hard part. From a zero momentum state with tension already, I come up to the top. Finger positioning is important here. Pinkies are down. Thumbs are up. Now come down halfway. Oh, don't go down all the way. From here, go back up again. This is 15 pounds and I am struggling mightily to perform one rep. It's obviously like one and a half or more reps, but I now have to go into my next rep. Initiate strictly from the deltoid if I can. Stop for a second. Reinitiate up to the top. Really difficult. Come down halfway. Come back up again. And then down. The muscularity that you can develop from this approach is off the charts. Why? because I'm actually directing the tension into the muscle for probably the first time that you've ever done this exercise. Because most of the time you're distributing it amongst all the other muscles that were helping you, not to mention momentum. So the overall impact that you have on your shoulder is that you can increase the strength specifically to the deltoid by cutting down all that crappy reps that you've been doing, focus more on driving the tension into the muscle itself, and now over time, I'll start to see, wow, maybe it is 15s that I start at, but I've got a lot more room to grow. I can get into the 20s after doing this for uh, a few workouts to start building that strength. Then up to the 25s. Now I take the increased shoulder strength that I got from using those light weights and I head back to that exercise again. And we're doing this for every other muscle group too. When I get back over there, if my core is stronger from training in this fashion, if my legs are stronger from training it this way, if my upper chest is stronger from training it this way, if my triceps are stronger from training it this way, and I get under that bar, I'm going to be way stronger on that exercise. You're going to be able to transfer your individual strength of the contributing muscles to the compound movement when you get back over there. And now you're hitting it from both sides of the equation and you're going to start to see some real gains. So 
please guys, leave your ego at the door. Focus more on driving tension into the muscle you're actually trying to grow. And the results will be remarkable. It's gonna make a huge difference on how you start to look. And more importantly, it's gonna start to build your confidence on the actual strength you have in your muscles. It could be humbling, it was for me, but I'm sure, I assure you over time, it's gonna be what you need to be doing. Guys, if you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, trains you so that you can get the best results over a 90 day uh, span of time, head to athletics.com and get our athletics training system. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what you want me to cover here and I'll do my best in the days and weeks ahead. See ya.